Welcome, welcome back everybody. How are you doing today? Um, thanks for joining me again as we continue. Well, we I say continue, we might be finishing the Satisfactory Overexplained uh, Let's Play long form tutorial beginner guide thing. Um, yeah, it's been emotional. I can't believe we're nearly there. Let's just um, load right back in. I did a whole bunch between episodes again, um, as we should see, thanks to my very well populated to-do list. Um, and look at that, it's a beautiful sunrise here at our base up in the uh, Northern Forest. Is that what this place is called again? Northern Forest? Um, I'm stood on a delightfully large uh, 5x5 um, blueprint designer because that's one of the last things I did was unlock that. Made a few more blueprints. But if you have a quick look over on... Uh, let's try, I always find that... I wish you could have a better background on the... Um, or a permanent background on the to-do list. Here's something I noticed though. Has this little has this little arrow always been here? Because I don't think it has. I think they must have added that in an update, and I just didn't even notice. But that's kind of cool. You can you can change the size of that. Um, I don't know if it keeps it. It's just gone back to the normal size now. But it's it's big here. Look, maybe if I had recipes added, we'd be able to see them all. But who knows? That's quite good. But um, yeah, look. So I've done. I've fully expanded the turbo fuel. That's really good. We completed the mycelia. I think we did that last time. Um, we increased the sulfur and coal for fuel, but I've increased that even more since last time because now we've got a whole ton. I think it's making 11,000 megawatts. So what's that? 11 gigawatts, right? Oh, that's a lot of power. I've automated the crystal oscillators finally. I did the explosive rebar tree, added containers to the turbo fuel station. Oh yeah, we'll explain that when we go and have a look at that. Look at what just done loads. Just done absolutely loads. What have we done? Changed the pipes for motors, automated the SAM fluctuators. We'll look at that. So done a whole load of stuff and I did a load of exploring. As you can see here, I've got 48 um, Mercer spheres at the moment. And I'm carrying a whole bunch of SAM fluctuators because that's going to be my first thing we're going to do today. Um, we're going to we're going to expand our, um, uh, what's it called? Dimensional depot capabilities, I think. Because I've been wanting to do that for ages. Um, so let's just go and have a look at that. And I think the plan for today, since this is the last episode, um, is we're going to have a tour around. We'll have a look at some of the stuff that I've done between episodes, just to talk about it a little. And then we'll um, unlock the last, finish phase three. Um, or we'll look at some of the stuff in phase four. And if there's anything we can unlock kind of quick, we might have a quick look at that. And then maybe, um, and then we'll just wrap up, guys. And it's going to be the end. I don't know. We might come back in the future. Um, I might do a little, I'm really enjoying the save game. So I do think I'm going to maybe take the save game a little bit further and see see how far I can get before I get that itch to restart, which I'm already getting. I'm terrible for it. I feel like I've learned quite a lot on this playthrough. Um, and this is the tidiest, nicest base, <laughs> he says, with the giant sky bridges in the background. But uh, this is probably the most organised I've been when I've played it. So I've been quite satisfied. I've got trains working much better than I've ever managed before. So I'm happy with that. Um, but maybe I'll come back and we'll do a little update once I've got to the next phase or something. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. Um, but alien technology, let's get this stuff unlocked real, real quick. Um, alien pot power augmenter, we could do, couldn't we? I just need 50 computers for that. I've definitely got the uh, sand fluctuators now because that's been automated. Uh, sloops are starting to get a bit low. I've had several instances. Oh, this is something I've just, I've got to talk about real quick. Where's my, um, where's my power shards? We're getting distracted already, but that's how we like it. Uh, Holy mackerel, I've got so many power shards in storage. That is great. Um, but one thing I noticed about the power shards was, you know, whenever I wanted to make some new power shards, I was coming to the bench and I'd come to this bit here and I'd craft them like this. But guys, don't do that once you've got so much loot productions because it's much easier to just build a constructor real quick, uh, set him to create those things like this one and then just put a bunch of these in because now you get twice as much out, right? So each purple slug now, instead of giving me that, instead of giving me uh, 12.5 a minute, I'm going to get 25 per minute. Fantastic. So yeah, definitely, uh, once you've got access to Soma Sloops, make sure you do that. I've got so many power shards now, it's just great. And I'm definitely feeling more of a, in my past lives, when I've played this game, I always felt like I had to expand and expand the stuff I've already built or build new factories to make things. But I've got so much power now, that I think uh, Soma Sloops and just overclocking is gonna do a lot of heavy lifting as I try and go forward. But anyway, let's get back to this. I'm rambling, rambling. Um, so how much do these cost now? 
So there are 100 sand fluctuators, and he needs seven Mercer Spheres for that. 13 and 13, and then 23 and 23. So I think we're probably in good shape to do at least this. And then maybe I'll do these two next ones. Because now that means we can hold a whole bunch. We've doubled our stacks to stack size. So we can hold four stacks of each thing um, in the Dimensional Depot. And then this will put us up to 120 per minute in the Dimensional Depot, which is also amazing. And um, the only thing is, of course, if you remember how I've set up my Dimensional Depots. Let's have a real quick look at that. In fact, actually, before I do that, should we just unlock... Where is it gone? Alien Technology. Can I afford him? I need some computers. Let's just grab some out of our pocket. Donk. And we'll unlock this and we'll try and build it today, see what it actually does, because I don't I don't actually know. It says it increases your power, I think. Let's say generates power based on the total amount of power. Maybe it's like some sort of percentage increase, I don't know. So we'll do that and we'll see what it does. I have no idea how big this asset is either. Hopefully it's gonna look cool. But we'll go and have a look at the, the power station in a minute. I did have some weird issues with it. Oh, what's this one? Alien power matrix. What's that do? Uh, used to enhance the output. Okay, interesting. Stomach for much later game playing around with it by the sounds of it. But cool. Um, back to what I was trying to talk about. So where we've got our dimensional depots here getting fed off of these things, they're being fed off of just... Um, I think this is... Sorry, my phone is... My phone's dinging in my pocket. Right, hang on. Let me just mute that. Don't want my phone going off while I'm recording. Um, yeah, these are just level one lifts. So they can only move 60 a minute. So now we've upgraded this to be um, 100 per minute. We need, uh, sorry, 120 per minute. We want to make sure that we're upgrading these as we go around. So I'm just going to make sure I'm uh, doing that as I, as I walk around. Um, in fact, let's just do all of these ones real quick while we're here. That's the first little jobby. Oh, what's going on with this one now? Okay, this is interesting. Why is this one not... Hang on, are you telling me? Why is that not going into there? I'd have thought all of them would be going at the moment because we've just increased the stack size. But it's not quite... It's not doing what I thought. So hang on, what are these? Much of the frames? Huh, what's one stack? 50. Yeah, interesting. So it has already done it. That's all right, I'll take them out for now so we can at least see the movement. So I've done this, this guy here. He's a conveyor level two, but this one's a little bit more tricky because I need to just make sure that this is also a melt Mark II belt, and that is. So at least we're feeding into there at the maximum speed. Great. Now we've got these ones. There we go, they're all done. And we'll do some of the others as we go. So let me just look at my list. What we'll try and do as I'm thinking about this, I know I'm nearby. So one of the things I did was change uh, some production up here. So originally, we've got some uh, steel pipes here. They're going into our stators that have been used to make our uh, motors in this big motor factory we've got right here. And originally they were being ferried up on the big long conveyor that was coming all the way from down there. Uh, right down in the valley below us. Um, but I wanted to repurpose those steel steel pipes to use for the SAM fluctuator um, automation because they're closer to where the SAM is. So what I did do was I've just, uh, we've got these pure iron nodes here and I was barely using this one. So I've just increased the output of this one and I've made a tiny little extra factory on the end here, which is just making the alternate um, iron pipe recipe. So we're just getting a bit of extra iron here coming into these smelters and these guys are now making the steel pipes for us that are feeding into those uh, uh, stators for the, the rotors. The motors, sorry, not the rotors. I've oh, got so many, so many things. So we talked about that. So let's see. I'm going to take these, some of these things out that we don't want to talk about. Let's see. Change pipes for motors. So I'll take that out because we've done that. Um, increase some of the productions down so well maybe we'll look at that in a minute um unlock some blueprints oh we might as well talk about the blueprints i made these were very simple um i'll just load them up in the blueprint designer actually so we can see them so i just made a couple of blueprints that i used while i was exploring actually and i, I can't believe i've never thought about doing this before so uh, what i did a couple of exploring sessions and one of the things that i found was like you know when you find those 
uh, you find those hard disk things that need power. So I just quickly made a blueprint like this to help me just do that a bit quicker in future so I can just throw this blueprint down whenever I want. Um, I, it even works that you can preload it with fuel. So I've just put 10 fuel in each of these. So essentially now these will come on and be ready to go straight away if I need to just power something up, which is quite nice. Um, and then the other thing I did was just make this little guy, which is also quite handy when I was out about exploring, just like a tiny little workstation that's just got each of the crafting type uh, bench things and then a mam as well. So that was quite handy again while I was going around just getting some bits and pieces. Um, so there we go, that's all we did with that. So let's clear that off um, and we'll carry straight on. Let me just take that off the list as well. Uh, we did talk about the exploring as well, but I got a whole bunch of uh, Mercer Spheres, which is really good. Oh my god, we're down to 15. We, <laughs> we used a whole bunch of those just now. Um, oh, here's another. Let's get this guy upgraded to a Mark II. So we'll make sure that they're already filled straight away when uh, the time comes. We got any in there? No, we have not. Uh, but that's all right, we don't need to worry about. I've not really used that ammo since I made that station. Met chiefly because I got the... Um, the assault rifle which has kind of just become my go-to now um right let me hop over here because i know we've got a couple more um lifts here that i just want to upgrade or is there just one yeah there's a couple here so let's get you upgraded wait a second there we go and that guy over there sweet so there we are how are we actually looking on this fuel mm, about half a box that's not too bad not too bad and how are we looking for the actual solid biofuel yeah, only about half a box there as well. So we do need to keep an eye, keep it. I've got to keep that in mind and maybe I'll need to do a big fuel run soon because uh, I do like my backpack. But of course, we will be getting a new backpack actually in the next phase. So let's have a look. We completed the mycelia tree. Should we just have a quick look and remind ourselves what that was actually about? What was in there? I'll take that off the list otherwise. What was the last things? Oh, we got the gas mask and the gas filter. That's something I want, did want to mention quite briefly, actually, is I've parked just... Uh, have I got a... Yeah, I've got a manufacturer up here. So, we've talked about this before, but I do highly, highly recommend you automate absolutely everything. Like, it's definitely worth doing that. Because even when you have something as innocuous as a gas filter. At the moment, the gas filters seem quite pointless in my eyes. If, if you're playing this game normally, you get a gas filter. All it lets you do is go through the gas without getting hurt. Um, you can do that in a different way by just blowing stuff up as well, right? But eventually, gas filters do become a component in something else, and you will need a lot of them, I think. Um, I'm not going to say what they are. We're keeping it kind of spoiler-free, if we can. Um, and same for high-speed connectors. I've got a few things we can use them for at the moment, but they become quite quite a lot more uh, mandatory in sort of later, later phases and later stuff we want to make. Um, so for now, I have managed to automate modular engines, adaptive control units, modular frames, sand fluctuates, computers, crystal oscillators, not explosive rebar. Not too bothered about that one, uh, but maybe. I will do it in time. I like the idea of just making everything automated. It's very, very satisfying, as the name of the game implies. So, what should we look at next then? So, the mycelia tree was completed, and we did the explosive rebar tree. So, let's have a quick look at that as well, just to see which things I unlocked there, because I can't quite remember. I think it's in this one. So, yeah, I think it was these, these parts here. Which one was it? So, I got this for explosive rebar. So now we can make explosive ammo for the single shot pistol, which is kind of cool. I think it does about the same damage as just a nobelisk. Uh, so that's quite nice. I've got cluster nobelisks. I've got a bunch of them up here, actually. They're quite fun. I'll uh, demonstrate one of those in a second. Um, and that was it. This turbo rifle ammo sounds cool. We do need... Oh, excuse me. Got a weird frog in the throat. Um, aluminium casing for those and you, you start doing aluminium in the next phase basically these sound insanely cool nuclear deterrent development so we can make nuke nobelisks that sounds very good but again that needs something uh, these things here uranium cells that's quite a way off for now um, and I did unlock this inflated pocket dimension we got a bit, a bit more uh, storage which is great all right cool so that's those things discussed let's get them off of the list as well so that's that we can get rid of all of these ones we talked about the pipes for motors uh i think that sinking we did last time the computer production and auto wire production they're at a level i'm happy with at the moment um i think auto wire will need to go and inc get increased for something later i can't remember what it is at this point but uh, they're both looking pretty great so we'll just skip over those for now i think explosive rebar tree is done 
So oh, we can look through the completed mycelia tree. So that's cool. Let's go. We'll go and take a ride in our pipe over this way then. And we'll go and have a look at um, where I've set up the uh, sand fluctuators. So it was a little bit of a mess, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I love things have gone a little bit messy the further I've gone on this playthrough. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of digging it. I think there's an all this it's chaotic, but there's all there's organization to it, right? So here we go. This is our this is our factory that's doing that. So if we look doing our sand fluctuators, so we've got the steel pipes that we're creating over there. I think this needed something like 20 something in a minute, is it? Or 30 even. And I think I've probably got about 10 or so spare a minute that I'm creating over there. So on my storage should keep topped up um, in that capacity. So they're coming over that way. Um, I peeled off a little bit of extra copper from this uh, node here, because it wasn't being fully utilized. So I've just brought a little extra copper here so I can make the wire that we need. And then these SAM, um, what are these things called again? Fluctuators? No, reanimated SAM, sorry, fluctuators are the, the final product. But they're coming from all the way inside our SAM cave over there. I also beefed up the production. Um, I put a Mark II miner on there. Um, and I've done that so that essentially we could produce um, our SAM fluctuators at what is essentially max rate. Why is he not producing though? What are we short on? SAM, 60 per minute. I think it's we're definitely making 60 per minute, so I'm quite confused as to why it's not... Huh? What's going on? Have I got a Mark 1 thing here somewhere? What's this? Ah! Oh. <laughs> Curse me. Right, how much... Right, there we go. Wait, Mark 1 is fine, though. Mark 1 is fine. The whole thing should be Mark 1. Wait, 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 wait. So we need 60 per minute. I'm very confused, but let's go and investigate. We love having a quick investigate. I'm not sure why that's not producing at 60 per minute. Looking at the, the spacing in between them, it's only producing at half of that. Um, so if it looks like something's wrong. This belt should be completely full. So I didn't hang around and check this properly, clearly. So we'll have a quick look here. Hopefully this is going to be easily resolved. There's still a gap all the way down here. Maybe I'm splitting it somewhere and I shouldn't be, or something like that. I like half of it's going to sink and half of it's going somewhere else. Let's find out. Right, so what is going on here? So, let's go back to basics. How much are you creating? 240 per minute. Great. How much are you producing? You're expecting two for... Oh, I haven't put a fast enough belt to feed this. That's what it is. There we go. Now you should be able to do it. Yeah, he was only going at 50%. Look. So this should start ticking up now. Look at him. He's constructing with no gaps. So that's perfect. That's all it was. And then these should start coming out now. Look, the belt is already full. You can just see. So where was the gap? Here's the gaps. That's the point where we changed it. Okay, fine. Happy with that one now. Um... I do like the look of these cool, these lights shining down on stuff. I do like the sort of look generally of this game. There's a very solid, solid lighting engine. I like it a lot. Unreal Engine is uh, pretty cool. So, back outside. What should we look at next? I think we'll look at our crystal oscillators because they're also a bit of a hot mess. But you know we love a hot mess here. It was a bit tricky doing the, these crystal oscillators because I wasn't sure, because I wanted to put it onto the existing train that we had. Um, so it did get quite tricky to sort of extend the train station. Took a little bit of jiggery pokery, not gonna lie. So, and that, the other end of the line was fine because I had a, a spare platform that I could just use for it. Uh, but this side was a bit trickier. I had to sort of add an extra platform. I think we added it this side. Um, so I didn't have to move all the boxes. Oh, it was a bit of a mare. But we did it, we got there. So now I've got an extra box here, look, which is dumping out our, uh, what are these called again? Refined quartz, it's all there. I've increased the amount of, um, uh, what are these, not steel? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these are iron ingots. Why is that top one not moving? I guess it's because it can only throughput a set amount. Um, and another thing I'd realized was that the other side of this, um, I wasn't, we were outputting too much, so I had to do two 
super fast belts feeding into the train station the other side. So I'm hoping this is all going to sort of be okay now. But look, these are so full. I'm wondering if maybe I should have two outputs. Mm, that might be a good idea, you know. Like if I did this slightly differently. Like if we got rid of this, we do another one. And I put him this way. And then I just feed him like so. What? Are you kidding me? Hang on then. Why don't we do it a different way? What if I do this first? Like that. And then we'll put this here. See, now it works. Silly game. But there we go. Hopefully that'll just help the throughput come out a little bit quicker and things are just... Yeah. Because this guy is absolutely chock full. Uh, but we are using all of that mat, those materials. I think one of the reasons that these guys were not producing properly is because we did have a lack. And I'm still not convinced that I've balanced this all out properly, but it's kind of working. It's good enough for now, lads. It's good enough for now, that's for sure. So, uh, let's have a look at the factory, though. The factory is a delightful hot mess. I just fit it in here best I could, because I was thinking, where am I going to transport all of these goods? And this seemed like a good little spot. Um... So we've got, and I used some alternative recipes actually for this. So if we look at these, what do they need? They needed, so they need the quartz crystals, they need some cable, and they need reinforced iron plates. Um, so I was trying to figure out, I looked at my alternative recipes to see how can I do that without copper, because I don't have any easily accessible copper from here to make the cable. Um, so of course we've used over here, I think, no. So we've got, these are the plates being made, and we've got loads of wire being made here, but this is using the... Uh, iron wire recipe so we're using those iron uh, ingots and turning them into copper wire which is great um, and then we've got these guys here they're actually doing stitched iron plates so we don't need screws because oh my god that the throughput of those screws is really quite painful to deal with so this way we only need you know a much smaller amount of wire per minute so it's a bit easier with the conveyor belts do you know what i mean um, so it's all good. It's all good. Did that train fully empty? Oh no, the last... The la oh no, it did, it did. That wasn't the last wagon, that was just the, the uh, locomotive at the back side of the train. So anyway, this is all ticking along really nice. It's a little bit of a jumble, but it's working real fine. Um, and these guys should be producing at 100%, which they are. So I've got two manufacturers doing 1.5 per minute. So we've got a nice uh, three crystal oscillators a minute and I think the default recipe is one so that should put us in good stead for when I might need to use those uh, going forward so yeah that's that one done too let me just I just want to update these things real quick and I'm going to pop up and do the ones on the computers and circuit boards as well um, did I do I swear I did some little refinements up here too but I can't remember what we did we're going to go and have a go over to have a look at the um, heavy mod no the turbo fuel in a minute so these guys are all pretty backed up at the moment um this guy keeps running out of automated wiring because i haven't um i haven't automated the, the movement of it so but that's okay for now i think we're just i'm literally sinking all of these because i think we've got plenty oh we've got loads of coupons um but if we go and have a look over here how many have we got on this box so let me just grab a couple of those because if we look up here Come on, highlighter, there we go. So we've met our targets now, easy for these two. I've got the 100 that we need to just drop in there for that. Um, and then I'm just going to leave this producing. I'll probably hook up the uh, conveyor to bring it over just so we've it's automated and it's just going by itself because I'm sure we need those for something in the next phase. Um, but cool. Um, was there anything else to discuss around here? I don't think there was. I'm just going to upgrade this guy to a Mark II to make sure our computers fill up nice and quick when we use them. And the same for our circuit boards. Bingo. I'll hop on over to our plastic and rubber production to do the same. Oh. I, I love our little base. It's going very, very well. Very pleased with it. Right, so here we are. So oh, this one's a bit tricky, isn't it? So I'll need to do that and that. And then we need to... No. We need to mark to that. Mark to that. And then maybe... 
Are these Mark II's already? That looks like it is Mark II there. And now that one's a Mark II as well. And that should do it. Not going to lose sleep over it. Um, we'll leave that for now. And then over here. Yeah, so I did, this is just reminding me of, I noticed, right, while I wish I'd taken a screenshot of it or a little clip, but as I, I came back here earlier on and I was producing some more, um, some more of this stuff, what's it called again? Smokeless powder, so I can make some more uh, assault rifle ammo. And that was all just going fine, no, no issues at all. However, as I was checking, so what we've got on this little step here is we've got two plastic refineries, um, and their output is going into a refinery that's turning that, um, what is it called again? the purple liquid heavy oil residue we're turning that into fuel which is in turn going into this fuel generator so when i turn this on this uh, smokeless powder refinery he's obviously s stealing some of that um heavy oil residue or, or is it the fuel he steals anyway whatever he's stealing um it's the heavy oil residue uh meant that this guy was getting less fuel so i was coming to check on it like this and i noticed i had these really big up and down spikes much bigger than the you know, what is this thing even generating? 300. Much bigger than that. Um, so we had to, I had to go and investigate. And I'm, I'm still not entirely sure. I seem to have fixed it. Um, and I think I know what the cause was. And it was a very strange one because I hadn't really thought about it. It's one of those things, that, this game's full of things like that. You just don't realise they're an issue um, until they happen. It's kind of what I love about it, though. So if we just hoof our way over here real quick. So, oh yeah, I forgot I painted it all. Looking a bit uh, Welsh flag, the colour scheme over here now. It's very red and green. But, um, so this is our turbo fuel factory now, and it's all up and running. Everything's connected. It does look like all the lights are green, which I'm glad about. Um, but what I noticed was happening was there was only two of these refineries were not working properly. And when I say they weren't working properly, they were like 80% instead of 100%. It was these last two. These last two fuel ref um, fuel refineries were on 80% and I didn't understand why. And then these two guys were on 80% and I didn't understand why. But what I did realise was that, that, so to problem solve it, I looked at this guy and he was full of crude oil. So I was like, it's not the crude oil. He's not waiting for crude, crude oil. These were both sort of empty as well, which were ind indicated to me he was outputting all of his stuff correctly. Uh, this guy's at 38 now, I think the max is 50, so he's still not quite managing to flush everything out. Um, he's still really quite close. So I think what the issue was, the, sorry, then when I looked at this guy, you know, again, he had full fuel, he was not getting any backup here, but it was this, was not quite being, uh, you can tell just from this, look, it's, he's only just got eight before he's made another one now. And this guy was running about, yeah, 80%. So it was to do with the compacted coal. It took me ages to diagnose it and figure it out, but I think what was causing it was the train station. So if we go over here real quick, so if you remember, we'd set up some of these assemblers before. These assemblers are making our um, compacted coal. I could probably delete this bit of floor here, actually. Let's just get rid of that for now. We don't need that. Um, so this, these assemblers are making all of our compacted coal. And again, some of these were not on 100%. And I was getting confused by that. I was like, why? There should be enough, you know. I was looking, looked in the train boxes. They were full, you know, they're absolutely full. So I couldn't understand what was causing it. So I upgraded all of the belts to the fastest belts I could, uh, just to make sure that the resources were getting pulled through as quick as possible. Uh, that didn't really seem to help. But then what I did notice was that we talked about it last time. You can't interact with these while the train is in the station and undocking. So you can't look to see how much stuff is in here. Um, and what I noticed was, was that the conveyor belts stop outputting during that time as well. So the same time when you can't you interact with these boxes, the conveyor belt stopped outputting. And that sort of gap in throughput seemed to be causing the last ones in the chain to not get materials. And that's what was causing it. So to sort of solve it, I just put these boxes on here with like the fastest conveyors I can. So now at least, even when this stuff is paused and not feeding into these boxes, these boxes will continuously dump out into these things so you know and these boxes are full the whole time um and now it doesn't matter i don't think that these boxes are full it doesn't matter that the train station is full it doesn't matter that the train waits here for ages because we've got plenty of resource to to fill these uh, assemblers so hopefully they're going all nice now we're not going to get any more issues uh, with them 
But yeah, I'm digging it. This is the coolest power station I've ever built in this game. It's real good, very satisfying. Um, and we've gone from initially, what were we on? 5,500 was our max. And we've gone up to 16K now, which is just mad good. So that should be plenty of power for me to start digging into the next phase. So I think, um, I don't think there's anything else much to really talk about on what we did last time. We've looked at everything in our little to-do list. So let me just, uh, we did that. We automated the sand fluctuators, added the containers. We talked about that, automated crystal oscillators. Right. So we've done everything. So let's, guys, this is the moment of truth. We're going to go and hand in. This happens sometimes on this one. I don't understand why. Have I left too big a gap? I think it might be too big a gap. Yeah. And if I do a run and jump, it sort of messes up somehow. But anyway, good bit of height. Let's get back over to home base. I do love this weird... Where's that water bloody coming from now? It makes no sense, mate. <laughs> um, oh, what a view. This place is cool. Oh, I did make... Hang on, before we do this, I just want to... I was trying to get a good screenshot from above of the whole base. It's quite a hard thing to do. Um, I ended up getting a good one um, after coming back from exploring one time, but I made this really funny, this really funny, uh, um, what are they called again? Hyperduplodger here. Um, and I just enjoyed this one. Because we can just go straight up in the sky and look, look at all we've made. It is cool, isn't it? We can see almost the whole thing from here. There's our power. There's our home base. There's our other... Shame we can't quite see around the other side of this cliff, but there's our... Oh, there's our trains going. Love it. What a game. Look how big this bloody map is. We've got so much scope to expand still. All right, cool. Let's go and see if we can sort out... Um, or we'll complete this elevator phase and see what goodies await. We might have a look, see what we can unlock in today's... and the time we've gone to today's episode. Um, but no promises. I don't know what we're going to do. don't know where we're going to finish. But let's see. I at least want to get the hover pack because that's just fun to use. Makes building quite cool. Right. Here we go then. Let's uh, get those in. Seal it. And send it off. Is there, is there an actual animation on the outside? For this bit. Doesn't look like. <laughs> Off he goes. Oh, watch out, mate. We're about to... Don't get caught by the big machine. Pretty good pioneering. Complete phase three of the space elevator. Here we go. Thunk. Oh, that looks cool, doesn't it? And there we go. Building some more stuff. Very exciting. Very exciting. So, objective complete phase four. Um, I don't even know what the heck those items are yet. I can't remember. And there's no way we can look at them, is there? Yeah. We'll have to go and have a look here. So, we're on tier seven and eight. This is the furthest I've got in the game now. I've managed to do... Uh, where did I get to? I think I've got to here. So I've done I've done all the tier seven on a separate save. And I've done pretty much I've done up to here definitely. I think maybe I had these last two left. That's the furthest I've ever got. So I'd nearly finished it. And I think I've got to try and push on and finish. Although I'm scared of finishing it because I'm the kind of person that once I've run out of goals, I find it hard to carry on playing. Um so we'll see. I'm a bit scared of of it ending. And if phase not like phase four, I've got no idea why even is in there yet. So anyway, let's do the usual thing we do. We'll have a look through these and talk about the different stuff. So Borgsite Refinement. This is where we essentially get access to aluminium. Um, and Borgsite is, is notorious, I think, on the internet for being uh, quite hard to do. Um, personally, I've not found it too bad. Other than some weird issues with the, the liquids. And I think I think a lot of the problem with liquid is you just have to kind of wait sometimes for it to settle down because it takes a long time for the liquids to fill up the pipe like we saw last time. Um, but anywho, so for, for making aluminium, we need to be able to find bauxite 
um, and we need silica as well as part of the process. Um, you could turn bauxite into a luminous solution um, and then you make that into scraps and then you can smelt those into ingots and then we can make things like these sheets and casings out of those. So that's really exciting. Hover pack, oh, I'm not going to be able to do until we do alclad aluminium sheets. God damn it. Um, but hover pack is great. We talked about it before. It uses 100 megawatts and it allows you to just hover. You can essentially jump and then press jump in the air and you just stay still. It's a bit like a no clip or a fly cheat in a game. It's great. Um, but you have to be within within range of your power grid for it to work. So you need to be near a power pole um, or a, something that uses power. I think it's actually just power poles or uh, what are they called? You know, when you've got, you get the little ones, what are they called when they go on the wall? What are they called? I can't remember what they're called. Tell me what they're called, game. Outlets. Outlets count. Power poles, power towers count. Um, maybe things like power stations count, I don't know. But anyway, you need to be near your base. You can't just fly around everywhere. Um, what else have we got? I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll select the bauxite refinement as our milestone and we'll, we might start, see if we can find some bauxite, because it is a challenge. The bauxite is usually very far away or in a hard to reach place. Um, so yeah, hover pack is good. Definitely want to get that. We'll need to get some al alclad aluminium. On other save games, I've managed to find enough aluminium to unlock this straight away, which has been very helpful, but we haven't done that this time. Um, Logistics Mark V. Oh, very cool. Again, we managed to go to the next level of the conveyor belt, which will take us from 480 to 780 items per minute, which is just insanely good. Um, but it just also gives you an indication of how big things are going to get if we need to move 780 items a minute. Um, and a conveyor lift to, to pair off with that. Hazmat suit. So this is cool. This is, I think this is the only item you get in the game that actually goes in your body slot here on our inventory screen. Um, but hazmat suit is really cool because it lets us go near radioactive stuff. And we haven't really gone much near, uh, near much radioactive stuff uh, while we've been playing this save game. Um, but it's a hint that we're gonna need to start doing that. Um, so, and what we need for the hazmat suit is these iodine infused filters, and they use those, uh, the gas mask filters, I think, to be crafted. So that's why we want to start automating some of that other stuff. Uh, what else have we got? Control system development. So I think this lets us make the first one of our new items. I think this is, hang on, let's have a look. What have we got? Oh no, it's, uh, it's that one on this one here. This one, I think, is the assembly director system. What an exciting name that is. Yeah, he's that one there. So we'll be able to start making him. He's our first component for phase four, which is great. But this now lets us start to get some really interesting items where we can make sulfuric acid, we can make batteries, which are a really cool power source for some kinds of vehicles. I think the, uh, the drones, which are in tier eight, I think they're really cool. And I think batteries work the best for those maybe. Um, I'm not sure. The only thing is, I think that the batteries are a bit disappointing because they, they're they consumable. You can't recharge them, which is how I thought they might work. Like, because that'd be sick. But obviously they're a product that you have to continuously manufacture. Or so they'd be a bit overpowered, I think. Um, but rechargeable batteries, why isn't that a thing? Guys, come on. Um, then we've got some complicated building blocks. These radio control units and supercomputers, we use those for different things. And I think they, they both go into this assembly director system. Um, and then Blender is a new kind of constructor. Um, that takes in two solid inputs and two liquid inputs um, and can make loads of different stuff. So we just start getting like weird recipes that use lots of different things from now on. Um, so that's how we make those, is in that blender. What have we got in tier eight? Aeronautical engineering, so that's where we get our drones and our drone ports. They're really cool, I like them a lot. Um, nuclear power. Oh boy, things start getting nuts. I've I've not done much nuclear power. I never. You start making nuclear waste. No idea what you do with nuclear waste yet, mate. <laughs> so yeah, that's this is getting onto about as far as I've gone. Um, but nuclear power plant looks sick when you build it. Love that. Um, but I know like the radiation is weird. Like I had a moment while I was exploring the other day where I tried to to mine the uh, a radioactive stone that I saw that I think there was a Mercer sphere inside it or something. So I was trying to mine it, but as soon as I mined it, it was like I killed, I was dead because I, I guess I'd irradiated myself or something. My radiation filled up to max, it wouldn't go down and I just ticked down my health until I died. So I'm very worried that you can do that um, to yourself just by near, being near this stuff. Uh, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't messed around with it enough to find that out yet. 
Um, it's a case of effing about and finding out. Um, now we've got this guy here, magnetic field generator. So he's one of the project parts. Um, again, very complex to make. Advanced aluminium production. This is quite a good one because you get these these resource well pressurizers. We haven't actually seen many of those as we've played, but you find sort of like um, water wells or oil wells, um, gas wells, stuff like that on the floor. Um, and you can put these on them to extract the stuff from them. This lets us start getting things like nitrogen gas, which we need to create things like these fused modular frames, um, etc. The, the level of complexity for the stuff you have to build from this point onwards gets absolutely nuts. I'm not going to lie, like it is, it is crazy. Uh, then here we've got leading edge production. I don't think I've actually unlocked this one because I never got the Miner Mark III. And he sounds very exciting because he doubles your miner outputs again, which is great. But again, that gives you an indication of how big stuff is going to get. Um, and then finally, we've got particle enrichment. So this looks like some of the stuff here. Oh, copper powder. Interesting. I don't know what this stuff is yet. I'm not going to look at it properly because we're not going to get there while we're playing this today. But this is just just to give you a quick flavour of how uh, how mad complicated things are going to get. So I think for the rest of today, how long have we got? We're only 40 minutes in. So we got an hour and a bit. Let's just um, let's have a tinker and see if we can do some bauxite refinement then, shall we? I think we'll just grab the bits we need directly out of our pockets. So let's look for... oh. Let's get some computers. So what do we need? A hundred computers. Uh, we need a hundred heavy mod frames. Uh, we need 250 motors. Oh. Haven't quite got enough. We might go and get them straight from the box over here. I mean, it is very close. We didn't need to be lazy there, did we? How many stacks have we got? Right, that's good. Put you back in there. No, I said put you back in there. Why is he not going back in? There we go. Got so many little bits and pieces of trash on me. I don't know. Inventory is very annoying in this game. Um, and what else do we need? 500 rubber. I think we might have to actually just pop down to the rubber factory real quick for that one. Woo! Right. Uh, one, two, three should do it. Right, cool. Let's get this unlocked. We'll go and uh, scan for some bauxite and see if we can get the rudimentary start of a, an aluminium factory setup. Because um, it's quite a complicated one. The thing with the aluminium is that it creates wastewater. Um, water is one of the byproducts, but it also needs water, so you can use that wastewater in to into the system but it just gets a bit tricky to balance that i think that's i found it i found it kind of tricky the first time um, and i kind of just fudged it by turning things on and off until it sort of balanced and then it just worked and i didn't touch it ever again um, that's not the best way to do things we'll try and see if we can get this right today together that'll be quite an interesting little uh, target for us so there we go we've unlocked that let's um i just want to just quickly dump some of this wrap that i'm carrying around with me Three copper sheets, mate. An iron ingot. Why am I counting three pieces of wire? What is this junk? Oh, we never looked at the nobelisks. Well, maybe we'll get to use those in a minute. Um, let me just think. Let's just, we'll just demo it real quick. Well, let's get our scanner out. Where's our nearest borg site then? It's not looking good, is it? <laughs> Come on, borg site. It's usually very far away from where you start. In my experience, it tends to be around this middle part of the map, in the pink forest, um, or near there. Oh, look at these. Good grief. Okay, those are going to be quite tricky to reach. This one seems like a good bet, though. We have this pure coal here. The only thing I want to make sure we've probably got next to our bork site, and this is only because I understand the, the process. Hang on, can we actually see that? How do we look at this? If we look for bauxite in our... Right. So, we can use it to make a luminous solution, right? So, if we open that page in this codex. So, we need 120 bauxite plus a load of water to make a load of alumina, which we can then turn into aluminium. And then, it also outputs some silica, 
And what's really interesting is if we look at this, so we can use Illumina to make scraps here. I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker. It'll be easy to see once we've put the refineries down. But that Illumina, we mix with some coal, and then we can make the scraps and we get our wastewater that I mentioned earlier. And then when we make take these scraps and change them into aluminium, we mix them back with some of the silica. Okay, so you need to mix these little alum aluminium scraps with the silica to make your ingots. But the entire process doesn't make enough silica for you to just use all of the aluminium scraps you make. So I want to make sure, so we need three things in close proximity really. So we need to make sure we've got coal nearby. We need to make sure we've got quartz nearby, I think is quite important. Um, and our bauxite. So this one over here, this is looking promising because at least if we've got one hidden down here, we've got a coal nearby-ish that we can use, um, and we will need to use the coal. We've got a lot of water here, which is quite good, so we could ferry the bauxite this way and set it. This bit was quite flat, if I remember correctly. It was nice and sort of lush uh, area. So why don't we, well, the first point of order then, let's, uh, we'll run over to this coal nose. Let's just highlight it to help us find our way. Where's he gone? Uh, it should be shown. Right, he's over that way. Oh, I thought it was the other way. Getting a bit confused there. Eh? That's fine, I've just lost... Oh no, it is this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost my bearings a little bit. Um, and maybe we'll, we've got to try and remember to uh, demo these guys on the way. Oh, look how hot sexy they look with all the red lights. So just to demonstrate it real quick, if I throw one of these, it's just like a normal lobelisk, flies, sticks to something, and then when you blow it up, it, uh, it just shoots out some little extra ones. Um, so it's quite it's quite handy for sometimes you get like a uh, a little secret that's got like a whole bunch of like those explodable rocks like these ones look oh per what a perfect example so those guys these guys are quite useful for these because you only tend if you're doing normal nobelisks you might have to throw more than one but because these spit out extra ones they're kind of handy did I just kill both of those guys. Sorry lads. Right, sweet. Um, right. Hey, mates. P.S. If you didn't know, you can ride on this guy. You should try and do it. I haven't done it on this playthrough yet. I haven't had a good opportunity. But we might do soon. Let's, um... Right, let's try and get up onto this bit up here. So where was that coal again? Over that way. What I might do... If we ride our power line a minute. might try and extend our power up there like this like if we do something like this it's not gonna I'm not, it's not gonna look great how do we want to do it maybe up that way it's a bit tricky sometimes to get it to go blue but there we go that'll do for now let's uh extend our power this is probably my favorite way to explore the map by the way is just uh, doing this oh I've just thought have I missed Oh, hello, Soma Sloop. Let's go and get that. I think we've missed something. Let me have a look. Can I do... Can I build radar towers yet? No. They were in one of the one of the unlocks, and I didn't look at it properly. But radar tower is definitely in one of these two tiers we've just got. And uh, he's a cool little asset you can put down, which just shows you uh, the stuff in your immediate vicinity. Now, let's have a look. Did we... Where does he come in? Organisation, I think. Yeah, he appears down here next to the lookout tower. We haven't unlocked him yet. But he is quite good because essentially what he does is he changes your map. Um, he'll highlight all of the points of interest within a radius of it, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's sort of very useful when you're trying to plan things like this. Um, and my favourite way to sort of plop them around was I'd just use these big power lines and just trace them, do a big spider web of power lines around the map, dumping the uh, radio, uh, radar towers every now and again to give each other coverage um, and that worked quite nicely right I'm going to do this it looks mega janky but I don't really care for now we just want to get up here oh my god there's that that bloody foundation from ages ago I wonder if I can delete it from here right so that coal is up here by all accounts and this bit does look nice it's very nice up here very picturesque so, once we're, we're a bit closer to this car, oh, I see spiders. I hate the bloody spiders. But again, do you know what's good against spiders? These things. 
because they explode everywhere. Hate that, spiders. Although I think it didn't actually work. Hate you. Oh, I got one of them. Not the other, though. Ooh. Is that a cave? Yeah, that's something. It's going to be a bit hard because I have the game audio quite low when we play. But, um, it's definitely worth, um, listening out. You can hear, like, the, the caves make, like, a little sort of whistling. You can hear the sort of wind go through them somehow. So there is a little audio cue when you get close to caves, which is quite handy. Right. Where's this coal gone? We'll stop bringing the power for now. I think we should be good to just dash over. So here's our coal. So this is cool. Look at all this water we've got. It's lovely and flat around here as well. Which is perfect. Who's seen me? Oh dear. He doesn't sound very happy. Come on then. Let's see if I can... I did work out the other day that Nobelisks do stick to enemies, which is quite hilarious. Yeah. Maybe think about what you've done there, mate. It looks very upset. Um, right. Let's do another scan now, see if we can find... Let me just reload my gun so we're ready for all fighting if we have to. And we'll see if we're going to be lucky and find any quartz around here. Got a feeling we're not going to, but we'll try. Come on. Come on. It's not looking good. Hmm. Well, that guy seems very far away. Doesn't he? But we'll, uh, we'll, we'll carry on. Let's just make a note of that. So that's some quartz. Um, I'll put that on. Put that on that for now. And then where was that bauxite again? We'll go and scope that out and see what the lay of the land is. Come on, where were you? Somewhere near here. Okay, there's another one there. So let's put this here. There's a bunch of bauxite, actually. Which one was which now? He's normal. He's pure. He's pure. Your good could be really good. I think this coal is pure as well, isn't it? Yeah. And this quartz, I can't remember what it was. Um, so that's quite good. We've got a good, good quantity of re resources. Oh, Christ. My typing is not very good today. Um, so let's make this one visible from a distance as well. And we'll head to that one first. Where's that box? Oh, I didn't apply the changes. Coffee Stain Studios, lads. You shouldn't have to apply the changes for this. It's uh, very low risk if I make it show on the map at all times, isn't it? Anyway, let's... We got a little sluggy in there. You can actually tell if... It, that's a blue slug. You can tell from the colour of the little things. So I've got so many power shells at this point, I can't be bothered to collect them anymore. Um... Right, so this bauxite is way up this cliff, look. This is always the way. So we're going up into the pink forest by the looks of things. And the pink forest is a little bit scary. Um, lots of... It looks really cool, don't get me wrong. But, uh, lots of scary enemies up here. And we're going to need to bring power. Maybe I should have done that first. But what I'd like to do is maybe just... Let's see if we can get up high and see roughly where we're going. Because this, it, the visibility here is really tricky. As you can see, like, you can't really see anything because there's so much foliage everywhere. Um, and I think what I'm going to probably aim to do is just get a nice high conveyor belt, bring it all the way this way. And we're going to bring the bauxite down here. Oh, there's a Sam node there. Interesting. He's quite cool. Um, I wonder what other resources there might be up here. This is a nice area. Anywho, right, let's get back to finding this bauxite. Of course, what you can do when you're up high like this is we can just throw some bombs. Let's see if we can carve a little path out of the trees somehow. That might make it a little bit easier for us to see. Oh, that's helped a lot, hasn't it? So yeah, 
Needed to be a bit brutal to nature, it looks like, if you uh, want to see where you're going up here. Didn't take a run up before my jump. Worst, worst jump ever. All right, I'm going to keep doing it this way. We'll just clear all the trees out as we go. That wasn't a very good throw, Rob. A little jump gives it an, a nice little forward momentum, though. Hmm. And Borgside's quite easy to spot once you've seen it. It's just like, it looks like every other node is just a sort of dark red colour. Um, oh, this looks like it right here. Did a number on those guys, didn't it? Sorry guys, I don't like murdering you, but you don't really give me much choice. Okay, so this bog site wasn't too challenging to reach, actually. Some of the places I've had it before have been really awkward. Um, but this is cool, I can hear a noise. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I know what I said about not bothering to pick them up, but this looks like a purple one. Purple ones are kind of worth it, I think. They give you so many shards, especially if we do that little trick I was talking about, where you put it in a slow-mo slow uh constructor. Right. Okie doke. So we probably just need to think about which way did we actually come from now? It's over this way, wasn't it? Well, nice path through the trees that we've blown up. I think this is the right direction. Yes. Okay, so maybe let's try and get rid of a few more of these trees again, just so it's easier for me to tell which way I'm going in future. Perfect. So cool. Um, now the thing is, am I gonna do a really high up? I think I am going to try and just keep it this level the whole way across. We'll use some, uh, what are they called? What are these things called again? Stackable conveyor poles. And I'll probably do them a little bit like this. You can zoop these, remember. So if we just do, which way do I want to head? Roughly sort of that direction. Quite hard to get the angle right. But if we go like this and just sort of, you can do 10 at a time. That's probably perfect, actually. So we'll do them like that. And then what I can do, let's get ourselves a miner. Don't think we need a Mark II just yet. I don't think. Oops. Because uh, he's doing 120 per minute already. And what does the... What was it called again? A luminous solution. How much do you need by default? 120, so that's perfect. We can just leave it as a Mark I. But now, uh, there's our belt. So all we want to do really... We won't do right angle belts, we'll just do straight belts. Hopefully, we can just sort of go like this. Connect, please. Donk. Um, and then what we also need to make sure we do is that we've got power. This is going to be quite tricky, actually. So if we do a power tower platform... Oh, Christ. Can't see it. We'll just dump him there for now. Get you connected like that. And hopefully I can just stretch this right across the valley in one go. So I think we want to take it to about there. Or maybe it's that. It's over there, actually. So one thing I've noticed about these power towers is I'm not going to build it just yet. Because my build limit is... is oh, sorry. My build reach is limited, right? You can tell it just sort of disappears when I move a tiny bit more up. Can't, I'm not allowed to put him on top of there. But the distance from which you can join the wires between two existing power platforms is longer than that. So if I go over there and build my power platform, I reckon I'll be able to just connect the wire straight up. So we'll, we'll see if that works in a sec. So, right, so he's going. We just need to continue this guy all the way across now. The thing that gets tricky with this, of course, is it's hard to judge how far <laughs> you can go. Um, because I'm not using foundations. So I'm going to play it safe or we'll just do fairly modest distance. And 
hopefully we can just connect these up without too much trouble. Uh, hello. So finicky. I, I, I'm worried about like the eventual console version of this because like some of the aiming is so tricky even on a mouse. Like it's not going to be it's not going to be easy to do on a controller, man. Um, they're going to need a button for like slow down uh, look speed or something like that. I think. Right, come on. Maybe we'll do this one a little bit higher because I think we're aiming for this cliff at the top here. So hopefully, I can still reach that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's going to be too far, so I think we're going to need to put this one somewhere a bit more sensible. Hopefully I can reach the top of that as well. Beauty! Almost there by the looks of things. And I think this is the point where I'm probably going to need to do um, a power line. So we'll see if we can do that, as we mentioned a minute ago. So my power tower's over there. Like, if I was going to build a power tower now... Yeah, see, it's too far away. But if I build one on, on top of this rock, for example, and then I do power line... See, I can connect the power line, no worries, from this distance. Which is quite interesting. I don't know why it works like that. It'd be very useful if you just had a longer build range, uh, build reach with it. But hey-ho, we move. Let's uh, get one of these here. Hopefully that'll just reach nicely. It's a little bit wonky, but I can live with that. We'll just elevate this a tiny bit more. And then hopefully this is going to be good. Dooby doo. wouldn't mind getting rid of uh, these rocks. Pro tip as well, the, the explosion radius is actually quite big on these, so you can sort of put it in the middle of some rocks sometimes like that, and you get a good result. It doesn't always work, but it is worth trying if you're trying to conserve your, conserve your, your explodees. Right, so, and this is looking good. Like, I see the, the beam of light on top of our coal right by there so that's perfect so i think maybe i i'm going to kind of chill here because i think what we're going to probably do is figure out how we're going to do some foundations can i blow up these massive i hope we can blow those up they're a bit annoying uh, we'll see but okay so we've got bauxite on the way that's cool we've got coal nearby that's also cool and we've got loads of water so i think we're in good shape to just start trying to build this factory. Let's, um, still haven't quite finished the power though. Uh, let's see, we do another power tower platform about here. We'll connect you to you, connect you. Uh, wowzers. What's that? Surface is too uneven. Yeah, I don't know where to connect this guy yet, so I'm not going to just connect him. We're going to we're going to figure out the logistics of how we're going to build this factory first, I think. So we've got our stuffs up here. That's fine. Let's get down here and see what we can do. Let's see if we can start blowing some of this stuff up. Why are you letting me? I have to make a few more of these soon. Oops, did not mean to do that. Oh, well, we got rid of that one. Can we get rid of this one? Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. 
So the coal's over there. We've got a lot of water here. I think maybe we'll just um that the land is got the ground is quite sort of high up here. That's the only thing I'm thinking. So do I do the thing where I sort of take a nice sort of high point? Like about here. Hang on, let's get rid of these. Pick you up so you stop floating in the sky like a weirdo. Do we take a really high point or do I just build it a bit lower down? Do we just go in the interest of time? I feel like we've got to be a bit quicker because we're going to go about an hour left. I want to get this thing built. All right, let's make a decision. We're just going to do it this way. Let's use, I'm going to use the point I'm stood on right now as my basis. Lock to world grid. There we go. That's our starting foundation. Um, oh God. Zoop. We're just going to start building like this. The water's a bit low down, but we got loads of power for pumps. We can move water if we need to. No worries at all. So again, this ends up being quite a large factory, uh, mainly because we end up using refineries and they're, they're just enormous. So we'll just make a nice long skinny bit like this. I'll we'll start throwing the buildings down and see and see how we get on. So, where's our coal? Over there. We've got Borgsite's going to be coming up from roughly, coming down from roughly up there. We've got loads of water nearby, which is grand. Uh, so, let's start somewhere. Refinery. Throw you down and see what you want to do. Maybe we'll try and put, we'll just put him square in the middle for now. In the middle of that square? Just about. That'll do. Here's our first one. So let's have a look. Let's get him making um, a luminous solution. So for that, he's going to need some bauxite and he's going to need some water. 180 per minute. This is where things get a bit tricky. So we're going to we're going to lay this out and just try and think about the different steps that are involved. Um, I've got no idea how tidy I can make this, but for now we're not going to worry about making it tidy. Maybe we'll just um, if we turn this guy around this way. So he's going to make our Illumina solution, which is going to output um, 120 Illumina solution and 50 silica per minute. Then this guy is going to make our um, aluminium scraps. So he's going to need 240 Illumina solution on 120 coal. Wowzers. That's already high. I think what are we going to be making? 120. We're going to keep this as a... As a a, a small, <laughs> a small one for now. So we'll use exactly what we're making from that last one. So we only need 60 coal, but it's good because we've got all these pure nodes. So we can, well, hopefully we can hoist the uh, stuff pretty easily from here. But let's just see if we can get a rudimentary um, aluminium scrap, aluminium factory working today. So that's going to output 180 of these per minute. Damn, that's a lot. We need fast belts for this. Um, and then it's going to output 60 uh, water per minute as well. So that's what I was talking about. It's like this is going to output the water that we can hopefully just feed back in, right? So it'll come out this way and we can feed it back into this because this guy needs 180 water. How much is he doing? 60. So a third of the water that we need will come from that guy from here. Um, and then the rest will do from a pump. It'll probably just be down here, actually. Uh, so that's fine. And then the outputs of this, what do we do with those? So we need the aluminium scrap needs to go somewhere. The water we've already discussed is going to go back into that one. So that's fine. Um, and then I think the aluminium scraps need to go into a foundry. So let's just pop him here. We're going to do this really rudimentary today. Uh, aluminium ingot, please. So he's going to need 90 aluminium scraps. How many were we making again? 180. So that's cool. The only thing is, see, we need 75 silica per minute for that. So we're not actually going to be making... How much silica are we making? That's back over here, I think. So we're only making 50. So that's a little bit of a shame. So if we tune this down a little bit, I'm not sure what we need. Maybe 66%. Yeah, there we go. So we're only going to be using 60 of the 180 aluminium scraps that we're making. So that's why it's very important, I think, to get extra silica. You need it in to get like a good efficiency out of this. But again, we're not going to worry about that. What we'll do is we'll just 
we'll just sink the rest for now. And um, we'll just get this working so at least we can make some aluminium ingots and we start uh, getting some aluminium to unlock some of the other technologies. And then once we've got some of that other stuff and you get faster belts and things like that, you can come back and just remake your aluminium factory and make it better, you know? Um, and that's how I'd probably approach this because it is hard. So that's cool. This needs then, so this is going to take the silica from the first refinery, the aluminium scraps from the second refinery, and it's going to produce our ingots for us. So that's cool. And then they're going to come out and we're just going to dump them maybe into a box for now. So... Okay, that's, that's not the right hot bar. There we go. So we'll just put this box here and then we'll just link these things up so we so we know what's what. So he's gonna go in there. And how many are we making? 40 per minute, so not too many, that's fine. That's our aluminiums going straight into there. These guys are gonna be connected to, so the silica needs to come from the first guy who's gonna be outputting in this direction, which is a little bit awkward actually i'm not sure how you lay this stuff out in a nice way that's something else i want to play with a little bit but we'll do that offline uh, so if i pop him there and then i'm going to do something a bit crazy we pop this guy like here like that can i do like one is that too long oh it works like that but just not the other way right so let's get a couple of um stackable poles I think if we just do two, it's too high enough. Oh wait, is that going too high now? It's going up a little bit. Let's... I oh, see that annoys me because that means... What if we do this? Sorry, just muttering to myself without finishing sentences. Let's put him just at that height and it should go... Oh, that's beautiful because it's exactly the right height. Lovely. So there we go. So he's going to take the silica, is going to come out of there. It's only coming out at like 50 per minute or something. So this, this conveyor belt mark one is fine. That's going to go into there. This guy also needs to give us. Um, he's going to be outputting. So the water. Let's deal with that quick. Where's my pipes? Here we go. So the water's going to come out. I'm going to want to put that over this way somewhere, I think. I'm going to join him back into this one at some point. So in fact, maybe we do one of these. Why is that not showing that? I hate that it doesn't always show the bloody snapping lines. No, dude, come on. There we go. So that's going to come this way. And then the rest of that is going to just be water coming from down there. So maybe I'll just build that real quick. Uh, how do I know if this is in line? <laughs> we don't. So let's see if we can do something about that. Oops. Oh, crud. Right. Right, so if I can just get this to lock on underneath, please. Please. Like that. Then we'll get a little zooping out like this so I can at least stand on it. Perfect. And then hopefully from here. These bits are always a bit tricky to make them look good in my experience, but. Mm, see, that doesn't look too good, does it? okay i think um who's who wants to fight that guy over there get over yourself mate not interested and then hopefully sometimes now that i've got one of these close yeah look i can hold control and it snaps i'm guessing that's gonna snap to position on here and now i think that's not gonna be enough dead uh what's it called head lift not deadlift so we'll put one of these on. I mean, it should be enough to come up to here. But I'll just, I'll put it by here because I think it looks cool. Right, excellent. So that's our water coming in. Now, the trick with, with the thing, this is one of the first times when I've played this that I've used valves. 
So the valves um, stop water going, ensure that the liquid can only travel in one direction. So what I want to see is the water from this... Well, how did you do that? Just teleporting up my pipes, mate. Where, where did he even come from? That was... I knew he was down on this little bit down here. Oh, look, two more. Get out of it. Um, but yeah, what we want to make sure see, is that the water from this water extractor is prioritised to go into this way. I don't need it to fill this pipe. Um, but maybe, maybe we'll just let it go and see what happens. We want all of these pipes to fill up. I want to make sure that this thing is outputting 120. I think it's the default, isn't it? Yeah, so he only outputs 120 anyway. The thing that's tricky about this is at the beginning, this guy needs 180 per minute to get started. So I'm, what I might do is just overclock this to 180 for now until the other things start producing. Then I'm going to bring it down and we'll see how that goes. Uh, let me just type in 180. Oh, I can take that back and take that back then. Right. The only thing that gets tricky, of course, is you can't leave him doing 180 because otherwise he's going to output so much water that um, this guy's water will just get stuck and then he can't produce, which means all of it backs up. That's why people find this hard, I think. Um, but we've got that set up now, so that's cool. What else does this guy need? He needs Borgsite coming in. Of course he does. So we're going to do the Borgsite very simply just here. Uh, where's my... That's not the right thing. Uh, six... There we go. So Borg's is going to come in this way from up there. So maybe we need to go and do that next. In fact, though, what was this one? Coal. This is where we need the coal, right? Okay, let's do the Borg's Knight first. Um, I think I'm just going to do this in my classic, classic style. We're just going to do a giant uh, column upwards. Oop, wrong burn. Still, after all this time, we get the buttons wrong. There's so many buttons. Right, we go like this. I have no idea if this is tall enough. Let's find out. Oof, not quite. Onwards. Right, oh, is this tall enough? Come on, it's got to be tall enough. Oof, still not quite. <laughs> That's mad. So tall. Right, that feels like about high enough. Probably a little bit too high. Drop down one. Drop down another one. Okay, that'll do. Um. Let's think. I want this to come probably down here and straight that way. So we do him straight across like this. Straight. Oop. Straight across like that. Lovely. Then we just put a few stackable conveyor poles. The reason I'm doing this now is just in case in the future. Oh no, I should have fast enough. Um, conveyor belt so I don't need to plan it this way anymore but I'm just doing this in case I want to you know bunch up uh, my conveyors in the future so it's always handy to have I think using the these uh, stackable poles is just a good practice generally rather than using you know the ones that that look like this and going like that because you can't add to them without it looking really messy and I've just realized all of this conveyor needs to be mark 2 doesn't it because we were getting 120 per minute So let's go and upgrade those real quick before we forget. So that looks like we've got Mark II all the way now. Remember, you can just check those little lights on the side. If we've got one square like this, we know it's a Mark II. 
I'm not sure why they just didn't do like the number of lights is the level of the belt. I think that would have been probably an easier way to just tell. Um, the Mark 1's got three lights on the side, which is very confusing. But anyway, looks like they're all just single, single lights the whole way, which is fine. Let's get this stuff up now. Get it down the bottom. Also need to get the power down the bottom. I'm not sure how we're going to do that just yet. That'll be the last thing we do. to do oh no this is going to be too long to do in one go isn't it so we need to do the old really big uh floor hole trick so i think mm, i kind of feel like i want to put it right in the corner like that and then if i do it has to be a mark two lift we're going to remember that That should be connected just fine like that now. And then, woo, we come all the way down to here. We get another conveyor pole about here. Sometimes as well, I've found that it's quite tricky to get the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When I've been trying to force like the smaller conveyor lifts it doesn't always work when you you just do like um, a what's this thing the stackable pole again? You have to put like a little bit of belt to sort of force it. That looks like I don't even have to climb the ladder. Result. There we go. Giant lift created. And now we can even delete that square. That's perfect. Um, is the ladder actually there? I think there's just some sort of weird lodge thing going on. Oh yeah, that's, that's bizarre. <laughs> um, anyway, let's continue taking this down this way now. I think that'll do for now. So that's our Borg site hooked up. Not the prettiest, but for now, for a start of aluminium, just to make sure we've workshopped it and got it running, I think that's perfect. So last step then, we'll be doing uh, the coal and then getting some power over here, I think. Oh, look at that crash site. Did I, did I look at this one before? It appears so. Right, so where was that coal again? He's over that way. Oh yes, so maybe for this we'll go in this direction. Well, that's looking pretty good to me. Uh, I think if we go like this. Oh, one little pro tip I've noticed before as well is if you're having trouble, I'm probably not going to have the trouble now, but you know when you put, you can do a minor on top of something like this, but sometimes it doesn't click into place. But what I have noticed is if you point, it's hard to explain, but if you look just here, you can see I can see a little bit of the coal node here. So if you point at one of those bits, it makes it click, click into the right place. So it's quite good if you're, um, if the ground you've put on is a little bit too high. Um, or something like that, but this looks just fine as is. So we'll go like that, connect this up like this. Uh, that seems fine to me. And then we only need 60 per minute out of this thing. So this is gonna be, we can just use a Mark One belt for now. Pop him about there. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. We want to make sure that we have, um, let's make this one stood up as well. Just so, just so it's 
I can run underneath it. That's my other thing I like being able to do. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, fine. Right. Uh, put one there. I have no idea why this road is so fat at the moment. Probably not going to put anything on it ever, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, on here. Now, where's the entrance to our coal? It's just next to that conveyor lift there. So, hopefully, I plop him about here. We should be in a good position, I think. I can go like that. We connect you to there. And just connect this all the way back. Then the exciting part happens. We can get the power on and switch this all on. See if we can make our first aluminium. If we're really lucky, we can chuck it in a constructor and get that hover pack before the end of the episode. Because man, hover pack makes building so much easier. Because it essentially just makes it like it's almost like a god game, right? You could you could just fly around and build a factory almost without any limits right so there's our coal so let's see where was that where did we finish that power line before <laughs> that's a problem to solve isn't it right let's go this way see if we can find it oh there it is i spotted him okay that's not too bad come on let me let me select it let me select it let me select it um oh, i lost all my momentum it's my worst I hate that. It was too long. Why is too long? So we can go to about here. Let's um let's ditch him there for now. I'll break off a little bit to power this guy. Of course, I'm just doing this super quick for the purposes of today's video. Uh, the tidiness has completely gone out of the window. Well that's cool, we don't need tidiness. In fact, let's fly up. He says that, but I want to do this bit a little bit tidier. We can get him actually on the foundations. That'd be nice. About there. And then hopefully we can stretch this guy fast here now. Can he connect to that? Oh, wire's too long. Got it. So maybe if we just plop him here, and then he can connect to that one. It's clipping through that wall, but I don't care about that right now. Cool. Okay, so is this already on the grid? Yes, it is. So that means our Borg site should be coming now, which is f fab. Let's just get a few more power lines out ready for uh, the rest of these things. So if we plot one here, plot one here. Right, you can go on, you can go on. You can go on. And I think this foundry needs to go on as well. Right, cool. Now we just play the waiting game. Let's just go and make sure it looks like things are working. Let's go and see, is, is the coal en route? Oh yes, coal is coming, delightful. Oh, I just thought about whether we could use a fluid buffer to help this situation but maybe not we'll leave it for now so what we want to do is just let's have a look at this water what's going on here so you're filled oh we haven't filled it we haven't powered the um the pump let's make sure we do that there we go now the water should be going up the pipe and he's immediately full he's starting to fill up this guy is starting to fill up. Shall we test this actually? If we quickly do, if I put a valve, tell it to go that way. Like if I flush this pipe segment now, this shouldn't get any water in it again. Empty please. Because you've got a valve here, which should be stopping it. I think the flow rate here it's indicating is to the left. Like from this side into this side. So this bit should be nice and full. He's nice and full. We've got quite a lot of 
space here, and I, we were talking about this before, and I didn't, I didn't even properly clock it, but it's down here, look, it shows us, this is our, I think each segment of pipe you build has got its own sort of size, right? So if I do, oh, we do just like a nice little short section like this, and then we do one that's maybe uh, twice as long. Oh, that's a bit hard to guess at this range, but maybe about there. Ah! What are we doing? So this one, look, he's eight meters cubed, so he holds eight meters, eight units of liquid, and he's 17.3, he's about twice the size, isn't he? So that's how it works. So we, the, the pipes in themselves are almost like a little sort of mini fluid buffer. They've got their own storage. That needs to fill up before it can pass on water to the next bit, especially if that bit's up in the air or something like that. Right, last thing to check then is that our bauxite is actually en route. Um, so let's get up the top and see what we can see. It is a really long conveyor belt. So it could take a little while. <laughs> but this is a good point to do it because we can, we hopefully, oh, there it is already. Um, hopefully there's no gaps. Doesn't look like it's filled that conveyor very nicely. There's our tasty bauxite, red rocks. Yum, yum. So they're all coming. That's great. You're a Mark II. I've got a feeling the one underneath is not a Mark II. I bloody knew it. So let's make that a Mark II as well then. Because that would have caught us out. And hopefully we're going to get some aluminium producing any, any minute now. Yeah, what was I thinking about the water buffer? Yeah, I was just thinking if we use this, we could leave him at his default clock rate. Um, fill a water buffer up a bit so we've got extra water to pump into this thing if we need it or to draw into this thing um, and then this bit can just start topping it up but yeah I'm not sure how well it'd work we'll just see we'll just see how it goes it's gonna start in a moment I cannot wait just checking these numbers quick so 180 water per minute we've definitely got coming from the thing behind us he's gonna output 120 oh wait 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 what's supposed to go in here coal where have I put the coal? Oh, dude. Thank God we noticed that, because we've done that completely wrong. Right, coal. You need to come this way. Dear viewer at home, I bet you noticed that. You must have noticed. Right, at least we noticed before it was too late. So this guy needs to go in here, actually. Why isn't that... Wait, what? Oh, is that the input? Yeah, it is. So that's the output, isn't it? Oh, of course. So this is going to be the thing that's outputting um, into there. And then this coal actually needs to come around this side and go into here. That's what it is. And oh god, I haven't even connected up the Illumina solution. Mate, we got a bit, we got a bit hasty there, didn't we? <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. Right, so I'll put you there. Let's see if we can make a nice stubby um, conveyor lift here. I love the little stubby conveyor lifts. Boom. So that should be our coal coming in to this one. And we need the alumina solution coming into this one too. So let's give him a quick... Uh, where's my pipes gone? Right, I really wish they had a straight mode for the pipes. That would be so good. Oh god, look how wonky it's gone. But never mind, we'll, we'll let it be wonky for now. So there we go. We're outputting our alumina. That's fab. And our silica's going off as well. So that's cool. This looks like it's starting to work. So we can't turn off the water down there just yet. We need this thing to really fill up. As soon as this is filled up, and we're starting to see this fill up. So this is how I've done this before. So at the moment, this is going to produce 60 water per minute, but we need this to all be filled up before that's happened. And then I'm going to down clock this back to 100%. I hope that makes sense. Um, we also need... Ah, oh, nuts, I forgot. We need a way of uh, sinking the aluminium that we don't want. So let's just make a really terrible looking platform here. 
where we can stick a uh, sink real quick. Now oh, that went a bit squiffy. That's not what I wanted at all, but whatever. And what we'll do is we'll just put a uh, smart splitter here for now. Forwards will be any. Uh, right can be overflow. And that can overflow into here. Should be exactly the right height. The only thing is these need faster belts as well, so we need to get all of that set up real quick. Plus this needs power. So he can start outputting some of that stuff. Uh, eating some of that stuff, rather. So wait a sec. How much does this output at again? 180. So we need, like, level 3 at least for now. There we go. That should sort that out. And that can start outputting correctly. Right. Cool. Another little problem solved. So that's fine. This guy... Why are you not doing anything? He's waiting for his aluminium scraps. Why are they not going in? Oh, because there's still a bit of coal inside there. That's annoying. Oh, what's happened to that? That's gone very strange. And this needs to be a Mark III. Just because we're... To make sure we're eating those scraps as quick as possible. Oh, hey, and there we go. Right, while that's going, we're going to go and carry on tinkering with that in a second. I just want to set up the... um constructed to make our aluminium sheets or al clad sheets or whatever the heck they're called and then we're going to dump those in a box as well and then at least that way uh, we'll have some of those stockpiling uh, ready for us to make where are they oh wait 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 how do you make them don't tell me is <laughs> it an assembler Oh, cripes. <laughs> I forgot that. You need copper ingots. Oh, we didn't look that far down the production chain. That's annoying. Okay, we might have to just manually create some for the purposes of today. Curses. Well, we can make casings. Well, I suppose that's something. I don't think I want to do that necessarily. So we'll wait on that one for now. Um, let's just make sure that we've got this running correctly first. And that we can fill up our box. So... Let's just see. This guy's currently stopped. Why have you stopped? Not sure why he stopped. Probably because... Is this guy stopping? It's hard to tell. So this pipe is really full. I can hear this... Um, this guy keeps turning on and off. So let's just go... And let's... We can... We don't need him to be running this hard anymore. So we'll just uh, take this out, put him back to 100%. So he's not overclocked anymore. He's absolutely full of water. And that's cool. I want you to do that. So hopefully now, now he's making 120 water per minute. That's fine. We've got this guy over here should be making 80 a minute. Sorry, 60 a minute, which gives us a total of 180. So you should start running okay now, because hopefully we're using all of this water that's coming out uh, just in time. The other thing I've done when I've been trying to get this stuff to work before, is it can be quite useful to just flush a single pipe segment. So, you know, this one's full. I don't want to mess with that. This one's also full. I don't want to mess with that. This one, though, I could probably flush it and allow some of this to come in. But it does look like he's got a green light now. He keeps turning off. That's one of the reasons that makes me think, like, maybe I could flush a part of this pipe um, to let him actually do something. Let's just try it. Sometimes it's really hard to get the water out because it fills up so quick again. <laughs> I wish you could just hold it. Donk. But it doesn't seem to work like that. But what we're doing here is we're just letting a little bit of water out at a time. That's meaning that pump down below is getting to just run a bit longer. And hopefully we can get it at a point where we've got a nice sort of balance. So look, that water's going down, which is great. We want that to go down periodically, because that means this guy's water can go somewhere, which is exactly what we want. Why is he idle? He's got enough stuff. He's not full of things. It's one of the things that's weird about this. Like, I don't understand. It could be that the pipes are full, I suppose. So what I'll try doing, let's try flushing this one a little bit. 
There we go. Give him a bit more room to um, output. We'll see if that helps. It stopped again. Why is it stopping? But again, it could just be one of those things you just need to give it time to figure out what the heck it's doing. How about you? How are you going? Oh! Why is he not getting bauxite fast enough? Wait, is this a level one bloody lift? Okay, that's one of the reasons everything's stopping then. There we go. Ripes. Okay, well, so let's just let that stuff run for a little minute and we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to do a very quick scan to see if we've got some copper around here. Because annoyingly, you specifically need copper ingots. Have we got any? I don't think there is any. Oh, wait. Hey, 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 that's not too far away. And it's pure. Delicious. Where was that other one that beeped? Oh, it's the one at our home base. That's fine. Oh, no, oh, it's not a home base. It's where our steelworks is. That one's too far, definitely. This one, though, definitely doable. So that's cool. Well, let's just let this thing do its business for a minute then. Where... Oh, golly, where's that gone? See if we can get it get up on the map again. We'll slap a marker down. Determined to get that hover pack before we sign off. Right, he's there. Uh, I swear sometimes you click on this new map marker button and it doesn't bloody do anything. That copper... Apply. Right, let's... um. Let's highlight that one a minute. We'll go and see where that is. Oh, it's down this waterfall by the looks of things. I wonder if... Um, that might not be a good way to bring it up, but over this direction where the coal is coming might be. Oof. Let's see, where is it? Oh, holy cow, that's far away. <laughs> That seems very far away. Um, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I'm going to make a plan to do that eventually, but we're not going to do that today. I'm going to dash home to base, see if we can steal some copper ingots from um, our copper factory. And uh, we'll come back and see if we can just make some aluminium uh, or alclad sheets for us to use. Oh, do you know what other... I just thought of another, another blueprint I need to make. It's just a little... Um, what do we call it? Hypertube launcher. That would be extremely useful. You can just plop a, a new launcher down and just shoot yourself back home. Yeah. Note to self, do that. Um, what's the quickest way from here? I think we just... I think we just run. Yeah, the, the aluminium is a bit tricky, definitely. We've had some issues today, but I think my issues so far were mainly like not realising that I had the, the wrong conveyor lift on. You always need to check everything like that. Make sure, and it's a, it's a hard thing to troubleshoot a lot of the time, but you've got to just look at each machine and just try and see what it looks like is either lacking um, or unable to do. Like if it can't output, if it's not getting enough input, that sort of thing. Uh, where were we going? Upper. Hopefully, these machines over here are, just gonna have a, are all going to be just full of copper ingots so I can just steal a bunch. I mean, look at it. It looks quite full. Oh, yeah. Give me those. Oh, you didn't have any spare. You got any spares? You don't have any spare. You got any? Nope. What about you guys? Oh, you got loads of spare. Come on, then. We're going to completely wreck this manifold, but I don't care. I got I got al alclad sheets to make, lads. Right, Bonzo. What time are we on? Oh, 15 minutes. Oh. Getting a bit, getting a bit, getting a bit sad, guys. This is going to be, this is going to be it. It is weird, though. You end up feeling, I don't know, 
when you do things like this, and by things like this I mean make YouTube videos and put them on the internet, I do find that I end up feeling like a weird obligation to carry on, even when I don't want to. Um, and that's got to be nuts for people who do this a lot more hardcore than I do. Um, but I'm glad we've got to the point I've pushed through. There was a couple of points where I was like, oh, I don't want to finish it. Got to a point I was kind of bored with it. But we've continued. We've made real good progress. Um, and hopefully if you've followed us since we've started or just for any portion of this journey, that uh, you've enjoyed it and it's been helpful. Um, I've definitely enjoyed it. This is probably my favourite game of all time now. Love it. Despite its annoying quirks and idiosyncrasies. Right, let's bin this off. Bin this off. Bin this off. Bin that off. We should have... It looks like we've got some nice um, aluminium ingot production. Oh, look at that. Great. That is all working just fabulous at the moment. Um, so this is cool. And this looks like it's running. Guys, I think I've done it first time. That's so annoying. I want to just go wrong a little bit more. <laughs> let's have a look now. So he's got loads of water coming in. Um... He's running at 91%. He's, he's catching right back up to where he was. He's, I just want to make sure it looks like, yeah, he's definitely got enough Borg Snipe by the next time the next cycle starts. So that's fine. And then how are you doing? You're up to 91 now as well. It's full of coal. He's got exactly the right amount of aluminum solution by the looks of it. Successfully outputting all of this. Successfully outputting all of that. So I think the thing... The things that we did, we just flushed the pipes a little bit. I don't even think that was it. I think the main issue was that there wasn't enough. I didn't look at this properly, and he didn't have any aluminum solution coming in uh, because we had this 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 lift wasn't running at the right rate. And of course, we did put this valve here, which is then ensuring that the water that's coming from here is always coming in, um, and the water coming from our pump doesn't get wasted into filling this pipe because we don't care about that. This pipe can just be filled by this thing. Um, and then, yeah, if you're trying to get things to move, I have used that flush pipes thing a few times. Um, and you can flush, you can choose this option, and that will flush every, all the liquid out of this entire pipe network, uh, which we don't want to do at this point, because these things are not making enough to get everything started again. But now that this is up and running, I'm hoping this should just be self-sufficient and carry on. The only thing, of course, is um, I'm going to run out of storage for my aluminium soon, so I might have to figure that out off camera but let's just build ourselves a little assembler um, and we'll collect that into one side we'll do a storage container over here which is going to feed in our copper um, so if we plop you here we'll make some alcan alclad aluminium sheets let's drop our copper into there got loads of it uh, let's power this up and then we'll just do another box the other side to capture the goodies. And we should be real good now. Should be real good. So there we go. There's our first Alclad sh sheets coming out. Beauty. Um, and we'll take some of these home in a minute. Oh, how many do we need? It was quite a lot, if I remember correctly. Maybe we should uh, sloop this thing. Quick, it's like that, just to get double output. How is our power usage looking, actually? Fine. Oh, look! Look! What is that about? What is that about? Very annoying. Slight blip in the power production again. Maybe that's something to do with the uh, coal and sulfur. I'm going to have to look at that off camera. But that is this game. That is the game, right? There's, you, you make some stuff. You fix some problems. You keep finding things you need to go back and fix a bit more repeat forever um just wondering now oh, that is outputting in exactly 60 per minute now so that's great uh this shouldn't take too long then but there we go aluminium done it we completed it mate no problems first try um and like i said the first time i actually did this it was a little bit more convoluted i think i had multiple i try out I, I went too big too fast so i had like I was trying, I had like two of these doing 240 per minute, so of course you need a lot more water then, and it's, that is a bit harder to balance. Um, but look, at just to get like basic production set up like this so I can just start unlocking some more stuff, I think we're in good shape. I think we're in real good shape. 
Um, so yeah, quite happy, quite happy. We just need to give it a little time now. Um, let's paint this the right colour, please. Now, wait a sec. What's that liquid icon? I've never seen that before. Who was that? How did I even get... What screen was I looking at? Huh? I must have pressed the button. Don't know what caused that to happen. Um, right. I'll tell you what I might do. Let's have a quick look. How much have we got? 115. Will I get the old uh, web browser? I'll have a quick look on the old satisfactory wiki. See if we can look at... Um, Uh, where is Milestones? Uh, what do we need? We need... Hover Pack. Oh, we only need 100, so we've got enough. Let's, let's grab them. That's perfect. We'll head home real quick and uh, unlock that Hover Pack. And then I think... Dear viewer, it's going to be time to say goodnight for the final time. Don't get emotional. I know it's I know it's been it's been a journey. Oh god, I feel like I'm going to sneeze. I've never sneezed on camera before. <laughs> oh no, fizzy nose, fizzy nose. Is it going? Is it not? Can't tell. All right, doesn't actually take that long to get back here, actually, from there. Um, right, let's do it. Hover pack. Oh, wait, I haven't got enough stuff. We need the other stuff as well. <laughs> um, actually, let me just bookmark. Set it to be active so we don't forget how much stuff we need. 250 motors again. A lot of motors in this tier. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We also need computers again. How many was it? 100? And heavy mod frames again. A hundred. And I know I'll clad. We should be good. Let's get it unlocked. Dunk, 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 dunk. Off you go. Sunny Jim. And now we need to craft it. Where is it? Hover pack. Oh, I've already got the right ingredients. Beauty. Oh, we got just enough. Look, we needed 40 more to make the hover pack. Phew. Let's craft him. Whoa, 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 we don't need two. There we go. Great. Um, that's awesome. So let's get that equipped. So one thing that's really handy about this, I think we talked about this a long time ago, is that these We've got these things above your main inventory. If I press the number key, like the left ones, is, you get like one, two, three, four, five, six, right? If I press two now, it will just immediately swap my back slot, which is kind of handy when you're exploring or building and you want to just quickly switch between the different backpacks. So I can be mid-ear, I can press tab and then two, and then I'm immediately switched over. So this is the hover pack. So to use it, uh, you just jump in the air to activate it so if we jump and then jump again now i'll be floating and i'll just stay still there's a little bit of a sort of slide and momentum to it and you can also see these little lines come out to show you which power pole um you're connected to at the moment you see them appear in there and um, you press space to go up you press c or crouch to go down um and you double tap crouch to stop flow flowing altogether uh, but as you can see it is extremely useful for just being able to get some good airtime and just take a look at everything. But I think, guys and girls, we are going to wrap it up right here. This is it. The sun has set. It's a lovely, moody night here in um, the Northern Forest. And I think that's going to bring an end to our... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. We nearly, we nearly fell to our death right as I was signing off. The only thing I dislike about this other pack is my massive hands. I wish you could just hide them. But hey... It's been good. Thank you very much, everybody, for hanging out with me for these last 17 episodes. Oh, it's been real good. Still don't feel any 
closer really to knowing what the guide's going to be. I need to reflect on that and try and pick out some of the stuff. Uh, hopefully we've demonstrated this is a cool game that you don't need help off the internet to, to achieve your goals. Um, and I love it. I hope you love it too. I hope you've had a good time hanging out with me. Thank you very much. I'll catch you very soon in the next video.